Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is timers executing the flash, repeat, or recycle function. Our objective is to introduce the flash, repeat, or recycle function and put it to use in some illustrated examples. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the previous timer functions lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time, pardon the pun, to do so now. Recall that a timer is a control device that exhibits a time-based shift between the assertion of its controlling input and the activation or deactivation of its associated contacts. Timers can perform numerous functions, including, but not limited to, on-delay, off-delay, on-end-off-delay, flash, repeat, or recycle, positive or negative edge-triggered one-shots, cumulative on-delays, and more. Today's lecture deals exclusively with the flash, repeat, or recycle function. Before we dive into an in-depth discussion of the flash function, allow me to perform a brief walkthrough and review of common timer functions. My intention in doing this walkthrough is not to confuse you, but rather to compare and contrast their behavior with one another. Repeated exposure to this topic is the best tactic because similar terms are employed for different functions and it'd be a horrible mistake to confuse one function for another. Expect me to revisit this exact same walkthrough of common functions every time we have occasion to discuss a new one in depth. Recall that a timing diagram of a timer executing the on delay or delay on energized function would look like this. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not instantaneously switch to their opposite state. The normally closed time open contact remains closed and the normally open time closed contact remains open. Only after the predetermined delay period T has elapsed do the contacts change states here. The normally closed time open contact opens, and the normally open time closed contact closes. When the controlling input is de energized here, the associated contacts quasi instantaneously revert to their normal deactivated state. The normally closed time open contact recloses, and the normally open time closed contact reopens. The on delay timer could be used to turn another motor on a measurable time period after another has started. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the off delay function. A timing diagram of a timer executing the off delay function, sometimes called a delay on de energize or DODE, would look like this. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts quasi instantaneously switch their opposite state, just like a regular control relay. The normally closed time closed contact opens, and the normally open time open contact closes. However, when the controlling input is de energized here, the associated contacts maintain the asserted state. The normally closed time closed contact remains open, and the normally open time open contact remains open. Only after the predetermined delay period T has elapsed do the contacts revert to their deactivated state. The normally closed time closed contact recloses, and the normally open time open contact reopens. Note the different terminology and schematic symbols employed by the off delay in comparison to that of the on delay. They're opposite, as one would expect. An off delay could be used to keep one motor running for a measurable period after you turn another one off. Note for this general purpose orientation, I've purposely simplified the timing diagram of an off delay timer. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the on and off delay function. A timing diagram of a timer executing the on and off delay function would look like this. An on and off delay, as the name implies, executes a combination of the on delay and off delay function. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not immediately switch to their opposite state. The normally closed contact remains closed and the normally open contact remains open. Only after the predetermined delay period T1 has elapsed do the contacts change states here. The normally closed contact opens and the normally open contact closes. This is the on delay portion of the on and off delay function. When the controlling input is de-energized at this instant here, the associated contacts do not immediately switch to their opposite state, but rather maintain their activated state. The normally closed contact remains open and the normally open contact remains closed. Only after the predetermined delay period T2 has elapsed do the contacts revert to their deactivated state. The normally closed contacts reclose and the normally open contacts reopen. 
This is the off delay portion of the on and off delay function. A symmetric on and off delay timer means the on delay and off delay time period are equal to each other. T1 equals T2. To set a symmetric on and off delay timer would necessitate only one delay adjustment. In contrast, an asymmetric on and off delay timer means the on delay and off delay are not equal to each other. T1 does not equal T2. Timers executing an asymmetric on and off delay would require two independently adjustable delay periods. An on and off delay timer could be used to coordinate two motors such that motor B stops a period after motor A starts, then motor B stops a period after motor A stops. Note for this general purpose orientation, I purposely simplified the timing diagram of the on and off delay timer. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the flash function, sometimes called repeat or recycle. A timing diagram of a timer executing the flash function would look like this. When the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts continuously alternate between the activated and deactivated state with a measurable period. Similar to our previous discussion about on and off delay timers, flash function might be symmetric, where the activation period is equal in magnitude to the deactivation period, or asymmetric, where the activation and deactivation periods are independently adjustable. A symmetric flash would necessitate only one adjustment. In contrast, an asymmetric flash would necessitate two adjustment points, one for delay period T1, one for delay period T2. The flash function could be used to create a super annoying warning strobe when a motor is energized, or perhaps timeshare a load between two different motors. Compare this behavior to a timer executing the one-shot function. A timing diagram of a timer executing the one-shot function would look like this. For a positive or rising edge triggered one-shot, when the controlling input is energized at this instant here, the associated contacts only temporarily assume the opposite activated state for a period T, and then revert to their deactivated state, despite the controlling input still being energized. This would be a rising or positive edge triggered one shot, and essentially does exactly what the name suggests, in that the one shot function is only enabled once for a period T on a rising or positive going transition of the controlling input. Alternatively, a negative or falling edge triggered one shot is one that the one shot function is only enabled once for a period T on a falling or negative going transition of the controlling input. One shots can be used to a certain output for a desired time period following the energized or de-energized transition of another device. One shots are particularly interesting because manufacturers occasionally include a slew of handy features, including resets and retriggerable versus non-retriggerable one shots. Note for this general purpose orientation, I've purposely simplified the timing diagram for rising and falling edge one shots. Finally, compare this behavior to a timer executing the cumulative on delay function. A cumulative on delay timer is a record keeping function where the timer does not temporarily shift the outputs but rather keeps track of how long its controlling input has been energized. Only after the controlling input has been asserted for the predetermined period of time do the outputs respond. Note, despite the controlling input being discontinuously energized, only once the timer has accumulated the required delay period here do the contacts switch to their activated opposite states. Such a timer could be used to keep track of how long a particular controlling input has been asserted and then alert the system that some maintenance or other task must occur. I like to think of cumulative on delay timers as little accountants that keep track of how long the controlling input has been asserted and continually monitor how much time remains in the bank before it activates the output. Note for this general purpose orientation, I've purposely simplified the timing diagram for cumulative on delay timers. To be sure there are other timer functions and twisted offspring of unholy unions of these common functions. However, these are more than likely the most common timer functions you'll run across. This orientation is intended to be general in nature and does not dive into specifics nor manufacture idiosyncrasies. Be aware of subtle differences in different terminology used to describe the same features. Returning to the topic at hand, timers executing the flash, repeat, or recycle function, you'll recall that a simplistic timing diagram of a timer executing the flash function would look like this. Flash, as the name implies, continually alternates the associated contacts between the deactivated and activated states whenever the controlling input is energized. 
when the controlling input is de-energized, the associated contacts instantaneously return to their deactivated states. A symmetric flash function means the activated and deactivated delay periods are equal to each other. T1 equals T2. To set a symmetric flash function would necessitate only one delay adjustment. In contrast, an asymmetric flash timer means the activated and deactivated periods are not equal to each other. T1 does not equal T2. Timers executing an asymmetric flash will require two independently adjustable delay periods. Timers executing the flash function are pretty simple in nature. Really the only complexity that can be brought to their discussion is whether the particular timer manufacturer initiates the flash period with an on delay or whether the flash function starts the flash immediately. The timing diagram that initiates the flash function with an on delay period would look like this, whereas a timing diagram that initiates the symmetric flash function immediately would look like this. It is your responsibility to interpret the timing diagram for your particular multifunction timer of interest. To set up a multifunction timer to execute the flash function, a technician must first choose the correct function and then set the delay period. Here's an example of a multifunction timer with both a two terminal coil and an additional auxiliary controlling input. This particular manufacturer does not make use of the auxiliary controlling input to initiate the flash function, but rather initiates it anytime the coil from A1 to A2 is energized. Additionally, this manufacturer starts the symmetric flash function with an on delay period. A timing diagram of this timer executing the flash function looks exactly as I've illustrated. This particular timer can perform eight different functions, A through H. To set this particular multifunction timer to perform the flash function for a period of five seconds, a technician will rotate the function selector to function D, the flash function as illustrated in the table. Then a technician would choose an appropriate delay. This multifunction timer has a symmetric flash function that necessitates only a single delay period. This particular manufacturer necessitates a two-step process to adjust the delay period. First, select the range, then adjust the range percentage. The range selection presents possibilities from one second up to 100 hours. The percentage can then be used to fine tune the delay period inside this range. For example, 50% of 10 seconds would be a delay of five seconds. Note this timer has two indicator LEDs one that indicates when the device is powered up from A1 to A2, and another that indicates when the outputs are in their activated state. You know you set up the flash timer correctly if you energize the coil, wait five seconds, and then see the output change dates. While the timer coil remains energized, the associated contacts continually change states every five seconds, and as the name implies, flash, repeat, or recycle. When the timer coil is de-energized, the associated contacts immediately return to their deactivated states. Troubleshooters take note. A multifunction timer executing the right function at the wrong time needs to have the delay adjusted. In contrast, a multifunction timer executing the wrong function at the right time needs to have the function adjusted. I'd like to say a misinterpretation of functions is a rare occurrence, but it isn't, and you need to be aware of this possibility. You know timers executing solely the on delay or solely the off delay sometimes they're all in schematic symbols. However, timers executing the flash function are often represented schematically as regular normally closed or regularly normally open contacts. The documentation associated with the ladder logic diagram should clearly indicate that these contacts are performing the flash function. Let's now move on to the remaining topic of this lecture, putting a timer executing the flash function to use. The flash function is characterized by continuous periodic oscillation between the deactivated and activated states while the controlling input is energized. For these examples, we'll make use of a multifunction timer that is symmetric in nature, does not require the use of an auxiliary controlling input, and starts the flash function with an on-delay period. The classic introductory example of the flash function is the time-delayed response of pilot lights. The three-wire control circuit in rung 1 and 2 serves to simultaneously de energize the coil of a regular control relay, CR1, and the coil of timer relay, TR1. Contact CR1A, associated with regular control relay, CR1, serves only as a holding contact, allowing the circuit to maintain the last asserted state. Rung 3 contains a normally open contact, TR1A, associated with timer relay, TR1, executing the flash function in series with a red pilot light. Rung 4 contains a normally open contact, TR1B, associated with timer relay TR1, executing the flash function in series with a green pilot light. 
Let's assume the timer executing the symmetric flash function is set to execute a 5 second delay. Note the start state of this system is red light on, green light off. When an operator presses start, the coil of control relay CR1 and the coil of timer relay TR1 are both energized. Contact CR1A immediately switches to the activated closed state and establishes a holding circuit. The holding circuit allows an operator to release the start button. In contrast, the contacts associated with timer relay TR1 executing the flash function do not immediately change states since this manufacturer initiates the flash with an on-delay period. TR1A remains closed and TR1B remains open. Only after the on-delay period of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 seconds does TR1A open and TR1B close. The red light turns off and the green light turns on. While the coil of timer relay TR1 remains energized, the associated contacts periodically oscillate between the activated and deactivated states. After a 5 second wait, the contacts TR1A and TR1B flip-flop. The red light turns on and the green light turns off. After another 5 second wait, the contacts TR1A and TR1B flip-flop again. The red light turns off and the green light turns on. As the title implies, the associated contacts are periodically flashing, repeating, or recycling when the controlling input is energized. When an operator presses stop, both the coil of control relay CR1 and the coil of timer relay TR1 are de-energized. Contact CR1A immediately returns to the deactivated state and removes the holding circuit, allowing an operator to release the stop button. Additionally, the contacts TR1A and TR1B immediately return to their deactivated states. The TR1A contact recloses and the TR1B contact reopens. The red light turns on and the green light turns off. We've returned to the start state of our system. The flash function can be put to use in many ways. The most obvious one being to create a super annoying warning strobe anytime a particular process is in the run state, serving to notify affected personnel that certain safety precautions must be taken. For example, consider the ladder logic diagram controlling one such system that alternately blinks a yellow light whenever a motor is energized. By all means, pause the lecture and see if you can determine how a timer executing the flash function makes this possible. Assume the timer is executing a one second delay. If you're tracking, you should have observed the following behavior. When an operator closes start, the F contactor coil and the coil of timer relay TR1 are simultaneously energized. The associated F contacts change states. The F1 holding contact closes and allows an operator to release the start button. The primary F contacts close and the motor springs to life. Additionally, the contacts associated with timer relay TR1 initiate the flash function. Following an on-delay period of one second, TR1A closes and turns the yellow light on. One second later, TR1A opens and turns the yellow light off. One second later, TR1A closes and turns the yellow light on. One second later, TR1A opens and turns the yellow light off. You get the picture. When an operator presses and releases stop, both the F contactor coil and the coil of timer relay TR1 are de-energized and their associated contacts immediately return to their deactivated states. The F1 holding contact opens and the F primary contacts open. The motor free spins to a halt. TR1A contact opens and the yellow light turns off. We're back to the ready start state of our system. Besides making stupid lights blink, the flash function can also be used to time share a load between two motors. Time sharing is to ensure one motor isn't routinely tasked with excessive labor while another sits idly by watching all the work. Does this remind you of your relationship with a certain lab partner? A properly time shared system ensures ordinarily idle system is also routinely exercised and the work equitably distributed. For example, consider the ladder logic diagram of one such system that alternates the load between two motor driven pumps whenever liquid level in a tank triggers a float switch. By all means, pause the lecture and see if you can determine how a timer executing the flash function makes this possible. Let's assume the flash function is set to 5 minutes. If you're tracking, you should have observed the following behavior. When liquid level in the tank rises enough to trigger float switch 1, the coil of timer relay TR1 and the A contactor coil are simultaneously energized. The timer relay initiates the flash function starting with an on delay for this particular manufacturer. Tier 1A remains closed and Tier 1B remains open. 
The contacts associated with the A contactor coil, however, immediately change states. The A primary contacts close and motor A springs to life. Assuming pump A has not evacuated the tank within five minutes, the contacts associated with timer relay TR1 change states. TR1A opens and de-energizes the A contactor coil. The A primary contacts open and motor-driven pump A free spins to a halt. TR1B closes and energizes the B contactor coil. The B primary contacts close and motor-driven pump B springs to life. If float switch 1 is still activated 5 minutes later, pump B turns off and pump A turns on. If float switch 1 is still activated 5 minutes later, pump A turns off and pump B turns on. You get the picture. Only when float switch 1 opens up are both the coil of timer relay TR1 and whichever pump happened to be running at that time de-energized. For the simple example, note that the series nature of the normally closed overload contacts serves to de-energize both motors whenever one motor experiences a sustained overload condition. Even though the other motor may be fine, this system would still cease pumping the tank. For this reason, if this was some mission critical task that must be accomplished, it would necessitate a significant upgrade in the existing ladder logic to timeshare while both motors are available and shift solely to the available motor if the other ever entered overload conditions. Astute and motivated viewers may wish to explore the possibility of creating a ladder logic diagram that does so, also utilizing the flash function. All right, that is that for this lecture. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at multifunction timers performing the flash, repeat, or recycle function. We introduced the flash function, reviewed general timer functions, learn how to set up an example timer relay to perform the flash function, and finally, employed a timer executing the flash function in several illustrated examples. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank <laughs> you.